Welcome to the channel. This is David Poe, and this is going to be a painting demonstration. We're using today an 11 by 14 canvas panel. And then uh, let me go through the colors and the brushes here in just a second. Let me pull some of my brushes out that I'm going to be using. All right. And hopefully you can also see the palette. Let me push you down here so we can see this whole palette. All right, so on this side, we've got our earth tones. I'm using ivory black, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Along the top here, uh, we've got lizard and crimson, cad red light, uh, cad yellow light, phthalo blue, uh, the green shade towards green, and then uh, we've also got ultramarine white, I mean ultramarine blue, and then the titanium white, and uh, we're going to mix in, uh, I think you can see that, oops, mixing in uh, some Galkid gel. I like to do that with the titanium white because titanium white, uh, of all the colors I've used, dries the slowest. So, and it's still still rather uh, chilly outside and so if it's uh if it was a lot warmer then i wouldn't probably need to use that but all right now we've got a palette knife just a diamond variety with a point to it uh, mainly to mix a little bit on the palette I'm not going to paint with that today i've got my uh damsol mineral spirits I like to use Viva towels to clean up, sometimes to even uh, work on the canvas itself and manipulating some of the colors. And then let me show you my brushes. I'm, not, I'm really not sure which brushes I'm going to use for this, so let me just go over a few. I've, I recently got these from uh, Rosemary and Company. This is a company out of England. They don't advertise, and that's one of the reasons they can uh, sell these at a reasonable price. But if you look on almost any artist website, you will hear people commenting on the fact that they believe that uh, Rosemary Company brushes are about the best you can you can actually find and buy, and I would agree with that. So I've got an ivory short flat, number six. I've got uh, an ivory dagger. This is a half inch. These are really interesting. They can get some unique shapes, especially for landscape painting. I, I like their unpredictability. Here's another one of those. This is a 3 8 ivory dagger. I've got a, a zero. Uh, this is a pointed round. I don't know if I'll be using that today. This is another interesting uh, brush. This is an Egbert number six. You can get some different kinds of marks with this as well. So a different shape. It's always nice to, to use some different shape brushes. This is a quarter inch ivory sword. I've got an ivory rigger. This is number two. Here's another uh, ivory dagger, quarter inch. I've got a number two ivory Egbert, smaller brush. And I've got a half inch ivory sword. And another rigger. This is a number four. So you'll be seeing me change out different ones at different points in time. All right. Oh, I should show you my photo reference so that you can see what we'll be painting today. So it's a simple, whoops, simple scene. There's a road, leads back uh, through some trees. So it's not gonna be as important with this style of painting. All right, let me push this all the way up so maybe you can see that a little bit better. You should be able to see this mixing area here and still be seeing the panel. So that's this will be the place where you can see me actually mixing. I know that a lot of folks like to do that, to watch the mixing of the colors. Um, if you like this channel, I do want to take this opportunity before we get started today to uh, please uh, subscribe, if you wouldn't mind, and then give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, uh, 
please uh, put those below. I always do respond uh, usually within about 24 hours of, uh, of you posting something. I, I check it quite often to, to make sure that I can respond to you. So uh, I'll keep that in mind. And try to think if there's anything else I wanted to get started and tell you about today. Um, today we're going to really focus, at least I'm, I'm thinking about this, this picture, my photo reference. And I want to use some bold color, even though that paint, that picture does not, let me, let me show that again to you. So, oops. All right. Obviously, there's not a lot of color here. There's a lot of green. So what do we do with something like this? Well, sometimes you've got to emphasize what is there. So I'm going to be working on some contrast in, in the green shade. So we've got darker greens here. So we're going to accentuate those. We've got some lighter greens. So we're going to accentuate those so we, we can use the contrast of the greens. This, this picture was taken uh, during the summer. And then over here, we've got this... We've got this interesting brownish, bluish, this is a little bit colder color uh, that we might be able to utilize. We do have the yellow on the road. We might actually uh, want to emphasize this. And of course, a little bit lighter shades, uh, more of your purples and blues. When I say cooler, uh, we're talking about those, those types of hues, right? The blue hues are colder. And so we're picking up some of that with this dappled light on the road. So that might be an interesting thing to bring. We also got some of these trees. And so uh, we can utilize some of those trees. Some of those trees are kind of what I would say are, are a cool color. And uh, this one over here is actually uh, warmer. And of course, we are free to invent some things too, if we need to, to make the painting work, all right? We're not a slave to this photograph. Uh, there's nothing really that interesting about this photograph. Uh, what will hopefully be interesting is the painting that we base on this photograph, right? There's a big difference there. All right, so keep those in mind as we're painting today. All right, I'm gonna put this back up here. I've got a little rack. And by the way, I, I think that uh, if you have a small studio like mine, uh, get a nice stand an iPad or an iMac, uh, something like that works very good uh, for using uh, photo references and then painting off of them. Um, in this small studio, I've got a, a 12 by 16 palette here that I purchased at a local art store for uh, not much money. And this is the easiest way to clean up is to, to use a glass palette, especially in a home studio, by the way. This little easel is just a desktop easel. I think it cost me $12. So all total, this palette and this setup, you know, you're talking under $50 for that. Of course, the paints are gonna cost you the money, all right? So if you're very new to uh, to painting, another uh, big tip, use professional grade paints. All these colors that I've shown you on the palette today happen to be from one brand. Uh, you have to kind of play around with it until you figure out which brands. And uh, most artists don't stick with just one brand for, for every color they will uh, experiment until they find exactly the right color, the right, the right consistency of paint that particular manufacturers uh, provide. For example, one thing I will tell you about, uh, I've been using Utrecht to, to really uh, delve into whether Utrecht's gonna be my brand for which colors and so forth. One thing I do not like about the, the, this uh, Utrecht brand and I don't know if it's just this brand or if I just got a bad lot, but it seems like a lot of the colors are doing it. And you can see over here, there's a lot of extra oil in it. And uh, I've been using from these tubes, so it's not like uh, this is the first go around with it. And I'm still getting a lot of oil that's kind of not mixed in with the pigment. And so it, it kind of creates a mess. And uh, I don't like that. I, I would like it to be thicker in consistency. So. I may be actually changing my mind about using Utrecht uh, colors. Uh, but at the same time I say that, Utrecht is one of the most affordable paint companies that you can use. Uh, it's sold by Blix nationally here in the United States. So anyway, you might want to think about. The other brand that I'm actually investigating is Lucas. This is uh, provided, it's a German company, I believe. They're 1862 professional grade. And it's only sold here in the States by uh, Jerry's Artorama. So, and what I've liked about it is 
I am not seeing this kind of oil spill out. It's in the same price range as Utrecht. Many of the bigger tubes also, a little bit nicer, is that they come in 200 milliliter instead of 150 like Utrecht. So you get a lot of paint, a lot of pigment, and I've been pretty happy with the, the uh, consistency of the paint. So, but, you know, I bought all this Utrecht and by gosh, I'm going to use it <laughs> as I'm not going to waste the money trying to, to switch everything out at this point. All right, so now we're going to get started with the actual painting. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to use one of these swords today to do the sketch. Or maybe I should, you know what, I don't feel like doing that now. I'm going to get a flat brush. Not much other brushes here. Here we go. This is a, a number two Utrecht brush, a 209. These, by the way, are um, a low budget, good brush, hogs, bristle, uh, flats. And uh, this is number two, a good brush for, for sketching in. So I'm going to do a little sketch. Let me move this up so you can go. Let's see. Why are you not able to see it? Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and make a pool of this right there so you can see it. I'm dipping into the Gamsol. I want this to be the consistency of ink. Okay. So we're going to basically be doing a little bit of an ink drawing to get us started all right first we it might be a good idea to put our horizon line in now in the photo reference it's kind of hard to see where that horizon line is but it's basically where the road has disappeared so and we're going to say that's about a third of this painting so i'm going to go ahead and I guess you could use a ruler if you wanted to in the studio, but I kind of like it to uh, to just do it uh, freehand, even if it's not perfectly straight. All right, and now we got this road element that I want to get in. And the road's not right center. Uh, it is off to this side, and that's that's a good thing. We don't want something right in the center of the, of the painting. It kind of comes out like this. Coming this way, and then it kind of takes a really big angle. No, nope, that's not too great. Okay, we'll cover up that later. And then over here, it's coming this way sharply. It's coming back this way. Kind of like that. And then almost everything up here is those trees. There's a few sky holes, but, but nothing else really. Over on this side, we get this brown element. I'm going to go ahead and kind of indicate where that comes in. Over here, we're going to have a major tree. So I'm just going to mark it right now. Actually, that's probably a little too close. I don't want the frame. The frame's going to overlap, you know? So uh, we got to be careful of that. You don't want to ever paint an element too close to the sides of your painting, right? Remember that part of that could be covered up by your frame. So I'm just going to move that over a little bit. I'm just going to make this a little thicker. To kind of remember that and as i'm doing it really thin i can come back in and um, do some things with that then we've got there's certainly uh some tree forms over here kind of a bigger tree just putting a kind of an area where that's going to be coming in uh actually i didn't put that right it should be should be close. Well, I've got this all skewed over here. Um, more land than I probably should have put. So what can I do about that? Do I want to make it come out more this way? I think so. So what I can do is we're still in the sketch mode. I can just take and, and sketch it all the way over there. This will be more of my brown area. 
of reference and just kind of highlighting it over here. And then up from here is where that tree is going. All right, now let me show you, take a paper towel, you can dip it into your mineral spirits, kind of wad it up a little bit, and this can become an eraser. And so, okay, I don't want that there. I can just kind of take that off of there and say, I don't want this, this line here. So take and Get rid of some of that. There we go. And same way over here, if I have to kind of erase that initial line that I had, I'll put it like that. All right. Now I'm going to work on some values. And once again, kind of uh, think about this now. Now that I got a little bit of a sketch going. I'm going to basically do an underpainting with the values, with the potential values using the burnt sienna. So I'm going to put a stain on this canvas, all right? Dip it in a little bit of Gamsol, get some more of my burnt sienna. And now I'm going to kind of fill in this whole area here with a very light stain. This also will make sure that the canvas, that white, isn't showing through anywhere. There's some debate. Some artists will actually just, will, will want that light color to kind of come through. And uh, you certainly can, can do that. I'm having some parts of that paper towel come out. I don't like that. Okay, now I'm going to dip it in a little bit more. So I'm just kind of staining that canvas. All right, the sky is usually the lightest. So, so this is what I want to be the lightest. Now I'm going to get some more of the burnt sienna onto my little sketch brush is okay. I'm sticking it here. The road is also going to be light here. You know, basically, oh, what am I saying? I'm going to have trees up here. So this is going to be darker eventually. Uh, so the road in this case is going to perhaps be our lightest value. So since that's going to be our lightest value, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to touch it at all. I'm going to get some more of that burnt sienna, though, with my paper towel. And I'm going to stain the canvas here with a different tone. You can see that that's a, a much darker tone than what's up here. So now I can judge the values a little bit more. So this is my lightest. This actually should be my second lightest. So I got to go back up here and make this darker. So very simple. Take more of my burnt sienna. And since I already got, I have some Gamsol on here, I'm going to dip it right into this and go back in here and see if I can tone this whole space, this large space here, where all those trees are going to go with a darker tone. And I'm kind of obliterating the trees, but that's okay. I've already got kind of a mental image now of where those trees are going to go. So I can, I'll go back in here in a moment and put a couple of marks of where I want those to go. 
So just think of this as you're staining the canvas, covering up pretty much all the white. Now, I'm going to back, go back over because I don't want I don't want pieces of paper towel everywhere. It's, there's some that have come off on here. All right, there we go. And now, I'll take a piece of towel, and since I want this this grassy area to be a little bit lighter. See how that that's not quite uh, distinguishable. We can take a little bit more Gamsol. That's how you would do it. So once again, we're using it as an eraser, and we're going to kind of take some of that color off of here. Cecil wants to keep moving on me. All right. So there we go. Now, I'm going to pull off another piece of towel. And notice, too, I'm working on all areas at the same time. Now I'm going to let this set up, this underpainting. It takes a little bit longer for Gamsol to actually evaporate than say turpentine. Of course you don't want to be using turpentine in any kind of a small studio. Um, and even outdoors, I, I don't know that I would recommend doing that. All right, and, and you probably shouldn't eat or drink during painting, but I, I'm drinking anyway. All right, so now we're going to use on our palette, I'm going to clean this spot here. I'm going to start mixing some greens. So I know I'm going to need a dark green. I'm going to take a little bit of cad yellow light, make a pool there. I've got two blues I can use. I could also use the ivory black, but I don't really want to use the ivory black yet. I'm going to take the ultramarine blue and we're going to make green. Now this is a pretty good middle green to start with. And I can, uh, I can actually mix that like that and kind of hold it up to my monitor to see. Here, let me show you that. So I can hold it up to the monitor and kind of tell, is that similar to some of it or not? Okay. Now, this might be a good medium base to work with. I'm going to take some more cad yellow light and I'm going to make it over on this side, just get a little bit of that green. And so this is a much lighter shade. This is more like what I would say is kind of the highlight green. Right. Now on this side, I'm going to go darker. So I'm going to take the ultramarine blue a little bit, add some of that green into it. And now I've got a much darker green. See that? There you go. Much darker green there. And then from these three, I can shift the color using my modifier. The modifier, since we're using primary colors as the palette, would be red. Red will um, will dull the color down, so it's not as bright as these. So if I want to dull it down, I can use the red. I can use uh, Cad Red Light, or I could use Alizarin Crimson. Since uh, this is a warmer color, I would probably go with the Alizarin Crimson. 
Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and some people like to do this is that you can almost mix all the colors that you think you're going to be using to start with before you ever put uh, a stroke down. So we got that road to deal with, which is much colder. So we're going to have to judge. You can make a gray, of course, with the ivory black, but it's usually I would recommend that ivory black be used very sparingly and most often in mixtures in which you're trying to desaturate a color. So that leaves us with uh, primarily we want to go for blue, uh, a bluish purple. So we're going to take a little bit of the titanium white and we're going to, let's see if we can see. I don't know why that's the case. Let's see if I can show you this a little bit better okay here is where we need it all right we'll put this down here so you can see it all right now i'm going to put just a little bit of the phalo blue because it's a colder blue put that in the titanium white I'm going to add some red to it. I'm going to go ahead because the, the CAD red light is actually a cooler red. So I'm going to put just a little bit and see how that grays down that blue. Mix that up and that's a nice nice kind of bluish gray and same thing on this side taking more of the titanium white a little bit of that color I just mixed so that this tonal value is colder and it's also a what we might call a lighter color, right? A, right? a lighter U. All right. Now on this side, take a little bit more of that. Add a little bit of the phalo blue into that mixture to bring out its bluish nature, bluish, bluish purple. And I've got a, a reddish brown spot here that we want to, to highlight a little bit. Um, so uh, how do we how do we incorporate that? Is it warm? Is it cool? What's it going to be like? I think it's it's actually a cooler color and it's going to be more of a purple. So we're going to go with. Um, hmm. I think I want to warm it up, so I'm going to use alizarin crimson. I'm going to try that first. Let's see if you can see where I'm putting it. Ah, I'm having trouble. There we go. Okay, so Lizard Crimson's there. I'm going to mix that with Ultramarine Blue to give us a dark purple. I'm going to add some of the Titanium White. And give us a nice cool purple. And it needs to be, as I squint, it needs to be similar to what the road color is going to be for that to, to work well. All right. At least we've got a nice start here. And if I do the, the yellow lines on the road, I might just use almost straight CAD yellow light there. Let me get rid of my piece of towel. Let's get another piece of towel ready to go. So, and now by now, since I've spent this time mixing, now the Gamsol has been allowed to dry some, which is also crucial, I think. All right, now I'm going to get a different brush here. I'm going to, I think I'll use this. This is the, uh, the half inch ivory dagger. 
So we're just kind of experimenting, you know, I don't know what's going to work out. And probably if you're painting along or you're in your own practice, you don't know exactly what's going to, to happen with some of this. I'm going to start with the darker greens that I'm seeing. And I'm going to use this, this pile of color here. So let me get my, get my paint on this brush. And I noticed that near the, uh, near where the road ends, there is a dark. So I can't paint a tree, but I can paint objects, uh, shapes. And so I'm focusing on sh the shape here that I see. And by painting it with this, and by holding at the end, it allows me to not be so detailed. I, I can't, I can't force this. All right, now I'm going to take my time, get some more of that green. And I see that the, this green is kind of connected. It goes this way. And then we've got some greens in this area. Now I'm looking at it, in fact, this green kind of goes, goes down this way, all covering this area right here. And then we've got some by this tree that's, that's near that red, that red spot of ground. We got some some darker greens that are going up this tree. And there's, there's some, some greens over here that look a little darker as well. And up here at the top, there's some green. And looking at the other side, there's some more. So now I'm going to mix some more of that color, altering blue, right inside that pile, adding a little bit of my Cad yellow light because that's the only only other color that made that. All right, then I can compare the the color easily enough that that's close enough to what I wanted. And now we're gonna put some of uh, the darkest uh, greens in here. It's best to connect the greens, the darks. Got some darks up here. Just looking at the edge abstract shapes here. And there's certainly going to be some darks over here. Another way to think about it is we're basically still doing an underpainting, right? With the shapes. And this will become a little bit more clear as we continue to work on it. All right. Checking over here, there's still some darks up in this area. Kind of connect this canopy. fan some of the sound. I don't want it to look too mechanical.
connect them down there. All right. So now, clean that brush off just a little bit with my towel. And now I'm going to go to this middle color, which is simply more of the cad yellow light and not too much of the ultramarine blue, just a little bit. Make sure I got enough paint here. All right. And so it really shows up in this area. keeping the uh, paint very thin. So this way I can come back over top of it. And notice I can leave a little bit of that board show through and it looks fine. So a little bit more cad yellow light and my ultramarine blue. And because I'm mixing in the same spot, it's easy for me to judge. Okay, did I hit that or not? And I can vary that a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly the same shade of green. All right. And I'm seeing a lot of this color right in, in, in this area too. So let me go in here. over here a little bit. I'm just concentrating on those background colors at this point. And with this painting, uh, the contrast of these darker colors, once I put some of the lighter greens on, should help it to really pop. Mixing that color. And as you can tell, I'm not, I'm not using a lot of mediums today. I have just put that into the titanium white, which usually that'll be your strongest colors, which you're going to leave near the end anyway. So. And now I'm going to kind of And 
that's one of the nice things about these daggers. Like I said, I can't, I don't have a lot of control over this. So it's giving me some unique shapes as I'm laying in this color. So I can't be very precise, which is all right. Okay, now take and wipe this off. And now I'm going to go to my third mixture of green now. I can dump a little bit of the Gamsol in it, so that way it's it's also light. So I see a little bit of it there. Even here, it's a kind of an inky consistency. And I'm kind of moving the brush around, hoping that I get some happy accidents. And there's this area here where I really want it to be quite light. And another, another thing that I'm doing intentionally, I should tell you about, is that I'm not adding titanium white yet. Titanium white can be a problem if you add it too soon, it gets into everything and it's going to cool the painting down quite a bit. So one way that you can keep that from happening is by trying to um, limit yourself. So tell yourself, you know, I'm not gonna start adding titanium white to any of my color mixtures until I've covered the entire painting first. Otherwise, Titanium can fool us into, into adding it all over the place. All right, so now I've just got this rich mixture of, of an abstract painting, right? And we're working our way through the colors. I'm gonna take this same brush, I'm still using it. Notice I can still do that. I'm gonna use this purple. I'm gonna put that where I see it in the painting sparingly. But this is my color here. So I'm gonna just kind of Put that in there. Once again, not not trying to be too fussy with it. Just just get that color in there. I'm gonna see if there's any other places where I see it. I actually see it a little bit in here. I see a few strokes, perhaps in here, which will be sort of my tree. And over in this side, it's going to be on that tree here. So we're going to lay in a little bit of that first. Now to our next grouping of colors, starting with the darks first. I'll clean this brush off a little bit better. We're going to go into our darkest, darkest bluish mix. A little bit more. It's an inky consistency again. And of course, it's darker closer to us when we see some shadows. So I'm going to try to delay that in with this. Yeah, leave a 
leave a spot there for some different color. Most of this is darker over there. Clean the brush off again. Now I'm going to use the middle pile. Kind of dip it in a little bit of Gamsol. And I see that there. There. It's not, it's not light enough. So we're going to use this pile instead. Maybe we will do away with the middle pile entirely. We may need some highlights, but the highlights need to be lighter than this. Once again, I can't be fussy with this brush. And that's a good thing. Put that in the strokes down and try to leave them alone, which is often one of the hardest things to do is to leave the paint alone after you've applied a stroke. Now, there are actually some little places where we see some sky just making a few dots on this road. So, I'll make sure I can get enough paint on my brush here. Hmm. I'll take some more titanium white. If you're having trouble getting the, the paint to adhere, it's probably that you don't have enough paint on the brush. So, here I've made a little bit more paint on my palette. Let's see if I can. And that represents some of those areas where the light is hitting the road. All right. So now the whole canvas panel is actually covered. And this is a good time to clean off this whole palette. This gives us time to think about what we're doing. I'm thinking even now, okay, what's really going to make this pop. And what I should do first is the tree branches. And we don't have to make all of the tree branches, but we do have to put a few in. And then our minds will take care of reading more trees in the abstract shapes that we have already created. So be sure to scrape off your palette. We want to make sure that these uh, mixtures are, are vibrant because this is... Basically, this is the level in which we're going to put more heavier paint on top of this of this level. Oh, 
Pathfinder, if you're enjoying this content, to please uh, subscribe. Let me show you how we're doing with the reference uh, photo. Yeah, just a pretty basic road, basic shapes. Take a quick drink here. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to use a little bit smaller dagger for this. This is a 3 8 uh, ivory dagger. And we're going to make our biggest, uh, our tree branches. Of course, we've got this one already sketched in there already. At least sort of the, the shape of it. And this is pretty vague in the um, photo reference. And I might want to do that and leave it alone. Over here, I want more of a... A structure but I don't want it to be the focal point so I have to be very careful about that all right so I'm going to use ivory black yay ivory black put it here mix it up a little bit just a little bit just a just a touch of the gamsol to, to make it flow a little bit and this is where we got to show some confidence in our strokes and instead of trying to do a, we don't want a straight line. We're going to make some marks. Most trees are not straight lines. So, in this area is where it's going to go. All right. So, I'm purposely taking the brush off at that point. And now I'm going to make another stroke for this tree branch. I'm getting a little too close to the edge, so I'm going to. I'm going to shift it over this way more. But also, by doing smaller strokes, you're getting some variety in the movement because it's, it's certainly not going to be a straight line. All right, we're going to stop right there. A little bit more of the ivory black on my brush here. There's also a few trees in this mess over here. Um, and there's going to be uh, some some green in their spurs. So, so what I will do is I'm not going to draw a complete line, but I'm going to put certain places where I see the shapes. Okay. So here we go. Sort of closer to this one. I see a kind of a shape here. And that kind of disappears. And picks back up there and back up there all right and right next to it we got a third tree and this one because it's a little farther back we see a little bit more of it okay all right now stop there for a second and over on this section, there are some trees that are that are going in this direction. They're slanting over this road and coming into this area here that I had already painted. So now we're going to try to, to get that in. And uh, this needs to be a little bit thinner line, so I'm conscious of that. I'm going to put a little bit more Gamsol to make it a little bit weaker. All right. Okay, so I've connected that. And there's, um, there's a couple of them, right? And kind of in the same area. So let's go ahead. I don't want it to be as big, I don't think. So we're going to put that. And we don't need it to be as strong. Yeah, three is a good number. Actually, see the shape here. And it's connected to something going up this way. Another one down here. Right. Okay. 
Now we're going to come over here, and because it's a bigger tree, I'm going to spend more attention to it. So we're going to I'm going to fan the brush strokes out across that. Make those areas a little darker. Step back for a second. I see a few, a few little trees back here in the distance, and they need to be smaller. So we're gonna just, just doing that with with a sense of touch. Unit five. There we go. We'll put those in there. And now notice how, how your eye begins to shape the masses that we put in earlier and to re start reading this as trees. Okay, this is a good time to change this brush. So I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to get one of my riggers. Okay, I'm going to go with the small rigger. This is a number two ivory rigger. I'll put some of my Gamsol in, still using the ivory black. I'm going to add some, some of the other, we have the trunks, but we don't have the, don't have a lot of the other details. And of course, they're growing all over the place, right? We've got tree branches growing almost everywhere. So I need a few to give us that sense. So I'm going to start, and I'm putting, holding at this end so I can kind of, um, uh, provide some unpredictability about these things. And I noticed that there's a few for this largest tree. Kind of going this way and turn the brush a little bit and pull it into that area. Get some more paint on the brush. And do that again. I'm trying to vary the strokes. And there's, there's a few of those going in that same general direction from here. Now we'll take some of these smaller, smaller limbs and start adding a little bit more. Barely touching it to make these little detail lines. And some of it's going to get covered over because we'll put some more leaves and such here. And of course, there's a few strokes coming all the way across these. This is where you can just take your time and watch what you're doing. Of course, with a picture like this, we got all kinds of trees. So it stands to reason that we should see some branches. Now I'm coming, um, taking a step back. I don't want too many over in this area because then it will pull your eye away. I want you to pull your your eye in here. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm wanting some of the designs to to fall into this area. All right, there's a few that give a sense that we don't we're not dealing with just sticks back there. that they are indeed trees. OK, 
Okay. Dipping back into the ivory. And now this group of trees, I'm going to put some more uh, details in it. Always good to go completely off the canvas. Trees just don't stop for us. This gives us a sense that the, the trees are, are a pretty impressive height. And then you can always, as you're making this, kind of twist the brush so you get some lifelike trees because trees will do all kinds of things. And hopefully you can see that there are places where it's not lining up and that's good because we want some of those trees to look like those leaves are coming over top of some of these branches and not, not covering all of them. Uh, but hopefully by now you can tell that uh, it's start, the painting's starting to come together and becoming much more lifelike, which is kind of amazing since there's really not much detail in here. And no one's going to remember that photo. All they're going to see is this. So there is a level in which you can kind of um, turn this into what you want. Noticing this and then I'm looking at how it's... In this area, we're going to put some other highlights in, but I do see some tree branches coming through this middle section. So not a lot right here, but up in this area, I see some. So we'll put a few. And now a few little detailed branches coming into play from, from that. even though it's not there I'm going to take a few show a few uh, branches coming from this so that way your eye will better read this shape here as a tree
right now I'm taking a step back to see how is this looking. Is it lifelike enough? Do I have enough of the branches? Let me add a few here. I'm also looking at areas where there's too much of a, a one pattern. Or paint blotches that aren't, that don't have any ver variety in them. So, I'm varying the pressure of the brush to produce some of those, those distinctions at this point. Right. Uh, right now I'm pretty pleased with all that. Might want to put a few little twigs or something in this reddish area. I don't want it looking like a just a big blob. But the eye needs a little bit of red with so much green. So that's kind of the method to my madness there. All right. Now I'm kind of feeling adventurous. So I'm clean this rigor off. And I'm going to put that little yellow line because I think that that little yellow line might might add something to the painting. So I'm going to use that rigger, put some Amsol on it. And with a very light touch, I'm going to try to suggest the curve shape here. Connect those two. And I'm going to put that second line close to the first. There we go. It gives the illusion, I think. Letting us know that we're dealing with a, a highway here. Okay. Now I'm looking around at other, what other details do I need? I need now to come back. We have some brighter greens over top in certain sections. And then have the discipline, I think, to otherwise leave it alone. I've got some, I might want to give a little bit more detail in this area, if that's truly my focal point, but we'll see, we'll see. So now I've got this yellow already there, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the cad yellow light. And what will give me a really punchy green is going to be the phalo blue. Just a little dab will do ya. that green going. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white to that mixture. Okay, I think that's, I think that's it. A little check. 
Now I gotta figure out which brush I wanna do. I'm gonna start off with an Egbert. I'll use the large Egbert and put a few of the details down. I think I need more paint than that. Remix that so I can get a little bit more paint. Now, on the photo reference, let me show you that for a second. See these areas right here? So I want it to pull you back into the road. A few, just a few little spots maybe over here and over here to, to give it some cohesion. But I want to mainly focus the, um, the brightest brights near, this, near the focal point, which is really back here. Some of those are going across the tree. And see if you have the lightest light and you have the darkest darks, it tends to make them even stronger. So we got some over here. I'm not thinking about leaves, I'm just thinking about, about shapes. Put a little bit more of that titanium white in there. Spot over here that's coming in.
just looking at the shapes of where some of those richer colors are. And then I put them there. And then I need to show some restraint now. But I don't I don't want to uh, highlight everything. So I'm gonna take a step back and take a look. give a little texture to this bigger tree and I want to introduce another color an orange so I'm taking what I got left over from the cad yellow and the cad red light it's a really bright orange I knock it down with just a tad of ultramarine blue Kind of a dirty orange. There we go. Now I'm going to take what is this? This is number six uh, short flat. Let me get that orange on here. I'm going to just do a few highlights here on this tree. The sun is striking it. Alright, I'll go back up, see if it looks how it's looking. Alright, that kind of that kind of gives some pop. I think I want to connect a few of these marks a little bit. Take a few out. Now I'm going to take this little white spot here and just kind of uh, make sure it goes into nowhere. There we go. Take my rigor brush again. Taking that orange color. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of orange over here. Just uh balance it out a little bit. There we go. And I want a few places. Step back again. Okay, at this point, I think I'm done because I, I could make it different, but I don't think I can actually make it better. 
So take my I got a little rubber tool, I don't know what the heck you call it. And I'm gonna sign it on this side. Let's see if I can do this without destroying the dag on painting. Maybe with the invention of AI, doing sculptures and other creative works, uh, maybe having YouTube channels in which we uh, artists show ourselves painting, so that way we can show the public uh, we're not we're not generating this type of art using some kind of computer program, but we're actually uh, artisans doing this with our own hands, with our own minds and imaginations, and and um, anyway, uh, something to think about. Another concept that I've been playing around with in my head is that maybe it would be best if we don't sell so many reprints of our work. In other words, um, a poster type copy of the original, but uh, if we only sold originals and maybe maybe have certain studies available at different price ranges for different folks, but, but to... Um, to see that as, as a potential of allowing more artists to sell their work by folks being able to buy whichever uh, level of talent they can afford uh, original artwork uh, from beginners as well as uh, experienced pros and professionals might uh, serve us all as uh, artists well. Just just the thought I'm having these days. All right, well, let me clean up my brushes. Once again, I thank you so much for watching this channel and um, Please subscribe, uh, share this post as often as you can, so that way others you know in the, the painting community might, might uh, get some benefit out of this, if you think. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you again.